Arthur and Teresa are now married, but there will be no reception, no party, no honeymoon. For Arthur is a prisoner in strange ways and has one year left to serve of a three-year sentence. Imprisonment punishes not only the inmate, but also the family. These anonymous figures set against the iron Victorian landscape of strange ways are society's rejects. Over a thousand adult prisoners are locked away here, many hundreds, two and three to a cell. How do they preserve their individuality, their identity, when prison dehumanizes men with uniforms, numbers, monotony and regimentation? In this program, we concentrate on the cons, how some of them react to prison life. When you go to court, the judge says to you, you will go away from society. It doesn't say you will go away from society and come in here and get beat up. And then they can turn around and say that it was our fault that we jumped them. Just because a man jumped for grievous bodily harm, it doesn't mean that he's going to attack everybody, every officer he sees, or everybody he sees. Does it? You know, that's what I'm saying. And then, then they turn around and say, oh, well, it's the same old story. He's been done for violence before. So they've got everything on their side. We've got nothing on our side. They tell us we can go to the Board of Visitors. Now, who's the Board of Visitors going to believe? An officer of good, good state status, like he's been in the service 15 years. He's done nothing wrong. No such thing. He's done plenty wrong. He just hasn't been caught because he's had everybody else to cover up for him, like all officers do like we do, like criminals do. When I came over to this country, right, I'd done nothing wrong, nothing at all. I was in the care of the local authority, right, for, because I was an illegitimate child and all this business they, they go on about up in courts and that. You know, I'd done nothing wrong. Nobody said that I should be put away for three years of my life. But I was. Nobody thought about me then, when I was away. 
And when I seen everybody else going home, I wanted to know what I were doing here. Why couldn't I go home? Why? Why was everybody else coming in after me and going out before me? And why, whenever I asked, there was nothing said, it was all brushed under the carpet. Is it any wonder why? And that's when I started to commit crime, when I started running away, when I realised, when I started, I didn't realise, I was stupid. But I just met, I, 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 I was in with criminals and I, I, eventually I ran away with them and eventually I came into Bergerman and that's how I done Bergerman. What does prison mean? It doesn't mean, you see, it doesn't mean nothing to me now, because I'm used to it, uh-uh. It's not, it's... I mean, I come in here and I just, I know the routine, and I know it's going to be the same all the way through my sentence. It's not going to change. I just resent being here, but while I'm here, I've got to make the best of it. I don't see why I should be miserable and whatever it is, just because I'm here and they think that I should be, you know. In Bernard's case, rejection, illegitimacy, and years in a children's home may have led him to crime. It now seems a way of life, for the odds are against Bernard's finding an alternative. Over 70% of prisoners return to prisons like strange ways. You know, I've lots of thoughts, like I'll uh, be thinking as I'll, I'll pull me through, I'm sure, you know. What's the most you've ever done before? I've done 5,000 in two and a half hours, and I did it really comfortably, you know, and I'm, uh, although I have to double that, I'm, uh, I'm very confident. Can you just tell me what made you do this? Well, I watched the film on the uh, uh, NSPCC about uh, battered children, and having a daughter and a son of my own, I, uh, I was approached if I'd do it. And, uh, and I took the opportunity up right away, you know, I think, I think it's a marvellous cause and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just made up to be doing it for them. Has it been very difficult putting in your training while you've been in here? Yeah, well, it has been, you know, there's little disadvantages. Obviously, you're never 100 per cent mentally fit in here, you know, so... Uh, what about the diet? No, I wouldn't like to comment on that, you know. OK, well, the best of luck. Thanks a lot. What are you in for? I'm in for... I'm in for theft, a very simple theft, me. I'm in for hundred weight of lead. You never believe what I'm in for real. I've got all the depositions there. And, um... I, I was, uh, I pleaded not to, uh, guilty to it. And uh, the solicitor told me, but I plead guilty in a court of law to this. He said, you'd have got a... Uh, imagine, sir, you got a 30 pound fine. I said, are you, are you telling me to plead guilty to something I've not done and get a 30 pound fine? He said, no. I said, well, then, I'm pleading not guilty. I'm taking this to the Crown Court. And, uh, and I went up, uh, up, up to the Crown and, um, you know, I was really upset and bitter over it. All these lads know I was really bitter over what happened to me. You know, I, they sent me to 15 months for 100 weight of lead from a Delorit house, you know, which I never took. The existing world record is 9,106 press-ups in four hours, 17 minutes. Alan is attempting 10,000 press-ups in five hours. 20 seconds to go. Every prisoner finds his own way to endure confinement. 15. In Alan's case, hundreds of hours in his cell doing press-ups in preparation for this attempt. Countdown starting from five seconds. Five, four, three, two, off. Twenty-five press-ups, a minute's rest, then another twenty-five. Five hours to triumph over imprisonment. Cons and screws form an uneasy alliance. Without some collaboration, the prison would not function. So much depends on the attitudes they adopt towards each other. Yeah. I repeat the order. Well, he made no move. Mm. I said, Nick, mate. Yes. I 
Plowman's request, and he's removed to the one place of Plowman by Officer Delta Duffy. That was the evidence, sir. Thank you. Now, you've heard the evidence. What do you wish to say? Well, there are only one or two small points that um, may throw some light on the matter, sir. Pardon? There are my, yes. only one or two yes. points which may throw some light on the subject. Yes. <clears throat> the first thing is that I was about to use the toilet for the particular purpose for which yes. it was intended, sir. Yes. And in so doing, I didn't see that having a cigarette unlit in my mouth yes. affected the issue one way or the other, sir. But as regards the rest of the evidence, I have absolutely nothing to disagree with, sir. When the officer told you to go out to the recess, why did you refuse? <coughs> it is my opinion, sir, and I repeat, my opinion, yeah. that perhaps the attitude and the oh. tone of voice yeah. might not have been consistent with obtaining respect from a prisoner. Now, oh, Vinny. Vinny is no stranger to the Nick. He can't seem to leave crime alone. One night's work in 1978 led to various charges, including rape, a crime generally unacceptable to other cons. Vinnie was acquitted of the count of rape, but convicted on others. Okay. Then I comes through the big gates, the big pearly gates of strange ways, right? So anyway. Comes in strange ways. Uh, obviously, I've got off the right charge. Some of the officers are, are all right, you know what I mean? I've known quite a few of them for a, for a long, long time. Some of them are pure dogs, you know what I mean? Some of them are pure dogs, believe you me. So I comes in, I'm on... Um, oh, sorry. I comes from Risley. I'm in the block in Risley, because there's been two riots, uh, a riot and a two sit-downs, and Valenti's involved. I stand out like a sore thumb, so I'm blocked. I lose three months of mission on a VC, and I'm back in... I'm, I'm here, down the block. So I come straight from Risley down the block. While I'm down the block, uh, I had it a little bit hard at first, you know, by certain officers. But um, when I come back out of the block, everything was all right. I got a good warrant off the governor not to cause any trouble, you know. Comes in, goes on E wing, I'm in a single cell. And then uh, I get allocated to a shop and come over onto this wing. I've had more aggravation on this wing since I've been over here. Honest to God, unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. All through screws. See what it is? Even though a bloke gets off a charge like rape, Right? It's still on your record. Right? So, if a screw's got it in for you, like me, I mean, I don't bow down to any of these screws. I do me a little bit of groveling to get out on the suppers now and again, you know. But I don't bow down to these screws. And that's my own... My mother tells me. I tell them straight and I should keep my mouth shut, you see? If I'd have kept my mouth shut, I'd be going out April. I'm going out July now. Comes out the block, I don't know what's going on. Everybody's blanking me. And I mean every bleeding... I'm telling you, you get the bleeding jail blanking you, and, it, and it's bad news. Comes up, so nobody level with me, nobody would tell me what was going on. Obviously, it's down to officers going around saying this, that, and the other, right? I'm in the cell, comes out of the cell in the morning, the certain officers give me the razor blade, and knew for the fact that these two cons were going to jump on me. I'm in the recess, and don't be not small lads, big lads as well. The jumps on me, I'm slopping out there, they jumps on me, two gangsters, so called gangsters, jump on me. So anyway, they come unstuck. So by the time this certain officer's got round, he must have been saying, well, should be all over now, but then he'll be, you know, he'd have his kicking and all that, but he got a shot. So he shouted to me to leave him alone and all that, you know. So I've left him alone, call it a day. Everything blown over then, all coming up, shaking my hand, everything's... You see me, I, I forgive him, so I forgive him too easy. But uh, the place wants closing down, believe I don't know about Risley getting closed down, this place should be closed down, because this nick is run by the screws, because there's not a con in here got any bottle. There's none of them got any bottle, they're all doing... They mix them up six-weekers with three-weekers. They don't put all the bot together. If they put all them up together, they've been, they, this place would have gone up years ago. But I'll tell you something, this place will go off. And when this place does go off, the roof will go, man, I'm telling you. Because they've not had a right here for a long, long time. 
Riz with the rabbin riots every so often. But when this place goes off, it'll go off. Because the tension and the men in there, man, it's unbelievable. McDonald. Stand in front of McDonald and pull him under the gun and make an application. McDonald terms, 805418. Yes, McDonald, what's your application? Uh, I'd like to make an application to go and see my daughter, sir. What do you mean to go and see your daughter? Well, she was in a serious road accident you know, on Friday afternoon, sir. I'm sorry about that. How old is she? Seven, sir. That's right. Uh, and what's, what's her injuries? Uh, fractured skull. No, it's severe face damage and I don't know if she's damage the spine. Well, strictly speaking, I have to um, be assured that she is not likely to live. Now, I hope that won't come about, but in view of the circumstances, do you know which hospital she's in? Ashton, sir. And she's age seven? Yes, sir. Can we do an escort for that, Yes, I'll, under the circumstances, sir. We'll let one on. Yeah, don't close them eyes. Come on, get that ready. Aaron is now coming to the 3,000 press-up mark. When he completes the next batch of 25, he will have passed that figure. His time, incidentally, to date is one hour, 30 minutes. has now achieved the 6,000 press-up mark. He's taken so far three hours, seven minutes to achieve this total. You may have noticed that the batches now consist of 20 press-ups as opposed to 25. Uh, this is because Alan has been experiencing a great deal of physical pain and Rather than interrupt the tempo of his endeavour, he's reduced the number of press-ups per batch. Entwistle. Under from the mat, Entwistle. Your full name and the gun. Make an application. Double eight two four zero seven Entwistle, sir. Yes, sir. But don't watch your application. Um, I'd like to apply for a special VO for my wife. Special VO to wife for what reason? Well, I was returned last last week after absconding from the hostel at Walton. Mm -hmm. And the first few I got, I had to send it to my family to take care of some business. Mm -hmm. 
What's so special about this visit? Well, special it's... visits are for special reasons. If you run away, that's your business. Yeah, well, I've not seen my wife or my child for several weeks. Well, you had the alternative to send the visiting order to your wife or, you, or to your family. You've got to make your mind up. Yeah, no, I see that's... no reason for a special visiting in this case. No, no order. Oh, all right, I'll be wrong. I'm going to get through this sentence without losing any remission. Well, I'm just going to try to avoid all these officers in here and keep out of them way, you know? Because I don't like to be pushed around and all that. And, you know, now that I'm inside here, all I get is pushed around, you know? And you, You've made some pretty strong complaints about authoritarian bodies outside the prison. How do you feel about the authority system in the prison? You yeah, will. it's really bad, you know, because They've got um, national front people inside there and all that, you know. And you know, you don't you don't get treated like like human, you know. But get that applies to everybody, surely. I mean, you wouldn't say that you were different, would you, in any way? Yeah, well, in a farmer way, I would say, you know, that they treat they treat the black guys in here worse than they treat some of the white guys. I mean, they treat some of the white guys bad as well, you know. If prison is a microcosm of society, then it contains its fair share of racial prejudice. But racist attitudes, either among officers or fellow prisoners, are particularly dangerous in the closed world of a jail. They only lead to more tension and bitterness. But in strange ways, you can say it's like a miniature old Deja. That's what I would say. Sometimes, one week, you'll get the pressure from various screws, even on this landing, if your landing screw isn't on. You'll get them coming across, blah, 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 in your ear, giving you pressure all the time. You know, um, in jest, in a jestful sort of way, you'll say, ah, well, you're just a coon, or you're, come here, black boy, or they'll come and open you up. I'm getting my sleighs for supper and he'll parade you down into the kitchen late at night. You know, and all that sort of jamba. It's like they call, uh, call it the gravy train, when they get all the coloured guys out. They get some funny ones, they open all the coloured guys up on the wing, and they call it the gravy train as they're giving the suppers out. And I, I think it's just, just mocking that, it's just a liberty, the way they do that. Because they're getting it out just for the sake of getting them out. I've had discussions on the landing with certain officers who have got their political beliefs. Well, fair enough, every individual to what they want. And we've discussed this racialism or national front, you know, one man, one vote sort of thing like Rhodesia. We want all the whites here, repatriation for you, the first, second and third generation. So while we've been talking, and we've had some, you know, good conversations about it, He's saying we create more prejudice by being in individual groups in a prison. But we're not because we always mix. I mix with him on the yard. And I mix with various other white people on the yard. But the officer concerned at the time was saying, well, because we wear plaits, which I don't, or we have afros, we're different. And they fear us because we're supposed to be like the Scots, mad, aren't we? In other words, if they come at us with violence, we're going to go at them with concealed razor blades or broken mirrors and stuff like that. So really, it's out of fear most of these people victimise us in here. You've adopted a criminal way of life. You? I've got a criminal... You've been three times. Yeah, but that criminal way of life is through necessity due to society outside. I mean, you get a lot of people in this jail who are in for the first time. They've committed a crime because it was necessary for them to survive. And that's all I do outside, is survive. You can't say to me, I am an arch criminal because of my beliefs. I mean, you work. How much do you get? £100 a week. You support a wife and kids. That won't do it. Not in today's economy. You can't survive. You got to buy food, clothes, run a house, pay your rent, mortgage, whatever. Can you survive on hundred pound?
Terry and Jean's little girl made a rapid recovery, but with release only weeks away, they have formidable problems. Their relationship is under acute strain. If this doesn't learn you, in a sense, you know, to sort of say, well, I've got to see sense, you know, I've got to stay, I've got to try and stay at home. Yeah, I know that, but I've never been on this spot before, you know what I mean? Uh, I could say it now, and you know, I might come home and I might stay out three, four, five years, but it, it can always happen again, can't it? Can't it's not just for my benefit. I don't want to come back, you know. <laughs> I know you don't want to come back, but you know these things, don't you? I know, but I've been saying, I've been saying all my bloody life, haven't I? That's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah, and that's it, I've come back, I've come back, and I've come back. All right, you're 34. In a matter of months, aren't they? Right. Are you going to come back here when you're 64? No, you don't. No. But you don't know, you've you got know, you yeah. such an old leg at it that they'll be just giving you your own key to walk in the door the way you go on. All I want you to do is come home, settle down, and me and the kids. And I think it's time you started thinking like that. Because this accident is less. It'll turn me, and it could turn me very nasty. And I don't want to be that way. You know I think well, don't you? But it could make it that I could just walk out on you as well because I don't want to go through this again. I've had enough of this life. I know, you know, you can understand as well. You can understand it, but... I don't expect you to be an angel, Terry. I mean, I'm no angel, let's what about, face it. What about the spots I've been in when I haven't had a bleeding penny for all five of us and I've yeah. gone and got it? I know. That, them are the spots I'm thinking yes, but about. But we've got to learn now, Terry, that we've got to... I'm not going to starve. I'm not going to say no, you're starve. No, we're not going to starve. We won't starve. Believe me, we won't starve. We're just going to have to both work together. That's it, though. Yeah. You know, Let's you're going to have to... I don't like work. I know. You don't like work, but you're going to have to learn. You can work in here, so why can't you work outside? It's watching the clock, isn't it? On which horse is going over at first fence? That's the trouble with it. You've got to learn to just cut it. Not completely. But you've got to cut it down to some extent. Good God. I'm not a martyr, you know. I'm human. You know, I've got feelings, you know. Right, ladies and gentlemen, this mixed batch of 20 press ups should carry on past the previous highest total. So I think we can well cheer them all the way through this next batch. Most inmates will do anything to avoid being locked in for most of the day and all of the night. But that is the reality for hundreds of prisoners in strange ways. Due to action by prison officers, there is no association, no evening classes, and most workshops are closed during the day. There is more than enough time for a man to brood on his crime and the punishment he has received. Like I said, I killed this guy. But doctors, psychiatrists don't know how you really feel. They try, to try and help you. They try to help me with my alcoholism and killing a guy. Depression, I've suffered with that. But once that door's banged up at me, I'm opened at seven in the morning and it's banged at eight o'clock at night. They don't know how I feel. They don't know how I sleep, how I wake up still with sweat. I've never forgot the day. I did that to that man. Never. There's not a day goes by, the night time, 
The daytime, you're busy. You're occupied with your mind. The nighttime, you're alone. You're in yourself. You're writing a letter. You're listening to a radio. Things coming to your mind, what reminded you of your past. When I get out, my intentions are to get married to this girl. She's got my kitty. She's stuck by me. She writes to me regularly. If she didn't, I think I would have cracked up long ago. That's the only thing that I live for in jail. My letters and my views, they count a lot. That's why I'm scared of losing remission. And that's why I know Strange Ways has got me just where he wants me, or any other prison, because of the remission. If we had no remission, this place would have gone up long ago, especially with the food they dish out. We have no facilities. They took the drawing books of us. So what do we do? We have to sit again in the, in the cells, banged up at night time. Just your radio. Without the radio, I don't know what I'll be doing. I was probably twiddling my thumbs, going to sleep at half nine. Lights out at half past nine, anyway. Prisoners have to conform. Those who don't are labelled subversive. If they are not isolated on the punishment block, they are carefully watched and regularly searched on the landings. For Ian, imprisonment has served only to strengthen his stand against straight or conventional society. Who's in this razor on the bottom shelf? What? The blade in it. One razor blade. It in, has it? Shouldn't have that. Well, we took the blade for there this morning. Go on, what to check? We'll check the phone. That was on the one that the blade. The other guy didn't have a razor blade this morning. That was on the one that had one. What? Does he shave? Oh, he doesn't shave. He's got a beard. He shouldn't have the blade, Ken. Well, I gave him a blade back this morning. And not OK, well, I'll fair enough. We'll check, we'll check it out. Check it out. We'll check it out. Have you left any of your earnings in? What? Any, you got any money in there? No. Not at all. You haven't left any earnings in? No, it's If he doesn't check out, then somebody's going to go down and see the governor about it. OK. Not made a mess of yourself. Could have done what we did. You know the score? No, get rid of my Get rid of anything in the cell that doesn't belong to you. You can't complain if you get nicked. I yeah. want money, big money, because I spend a lot. I always spend a lot of money. You've got, after you've been in here late. You got, you've got a lot, to, you've a hell of a lot to make up for, not? Four, four years I'm stopping here for. Missing a lot of life, I've got to catch up now. I've got maybe about three months, I'll catch up in that four years. A lot of living to do in three months. And you'll, you'll, you'll go back to the same life? Oh, aye. I'm 30 years old and I've been at it for the last 16 years. It's, it's a trade, you know. What has what it meant being in here? Has it made you as determined as ever or what? Yeah, because it's, every time I'm caught, it's him got one over me. So I've got to go and get away with you to get it back. It's one way of looking at it, but if, when you get out here and you've got money in your pocket, you forget. It's surprising how quickly you forget about the place. And if you're going out to do a robbery, you don't think about the chances you've been caught. It's just the last thing that enters your mind, no? It only comes in top. Well, I've never been caught. I've been grass a lot. But it only comes in top when you're back in your own remand and you're going, well, what the fuck can I get here? Can I get off here? Trying to make up a case to get off. You better than you get off. Well, you get here, society will not do nothing for you. You got you got for a job, you say, oh, he's just out of prison. You can't give him a job, you know. So you just got, again, another job. You can't give him, he's been out of prison. So you just got to take your money off him and fuck our jobs. Society offers you nothing? Can't he do nothing for you? They've labelled you. They've labelled you as a villain, and that's it. I'm what's known as an active criminal, even when I'm no active. So I've got to live up to the part. But you could end up by killing somebody. I could, but if I kill someone that were a policeman, the same type of person that's going to kill me, they're going out shooting people. Now they've got up for three in the last two years. They've got a home office pathologist proved the guy was shot in the back. 
and still nothing's done about it. Six minutes, 20 seconds. Can I give you £100 which a well-wisher brought to the gate for Alan for the NSPCC? Thank you. And I think you've got something else to look yes. forward to, haven't Yes, because it's released on Friday. Yeah. Good luck to you all. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Not only have you done a great deal, I'm sure, for yourself, but for the National Prevention of Cruelty to Children. I'm going to break all the rules in the book as the governor of this prison. <laughs> if any man. I get in ruts, I get in what kind of a rut outside, I get really depressed. You know, the state of the country, you can't get work, you're walking around, you're getting a few bob, you're taking it off the wife or the jar, you're going in in the betting shop, you're trying to have a bet, you're getting in more trouble, you're going home, there's friction, there's arguments, and I, you know, I really give my wife on her time, and I'm ashamed of it, and I've, well, I've been in here now, I've been in for 12 months, and, she, and she's having me back. And out of this, I'd be made up. If I can get work of some kind, out of this, you know, I'll be really happy. But it, it looks bleak. It looks bleak because, you know, you go for jobs, there's, there's a million and a half unemployed. There's a million of them people never been in trouble with the police at all. They can afford to pick and choose. They've no, they have no need to take ex-convicts, just come out of prison. They can pick and choose, they can have who they want. You've no chance. I've been for jobs. You've got to lie on top of lie on top of lie and saying you've had jobs, you've worked here. If you go to a, a job and you say, have you been in trouble with the police? Yes. Have you been? Yes. You've just no chance at all. You know, and that's the set. I'm going out there. It's going to be hard for me. And I, I just hope uh, after achieving this is... I'll get the chance of a job. That's all I want out of it. We learnt afterwards that despite having done more press-ups than any other man in that amount of time, Alan's record had not been ratified by the Guinness Book of Records. No one had mentioned that he had to rest between his batches of press-ups in a prone position. <laughs> <laughs> 